Just got back from seeing the Spider-Man No Way Home movie, and I'm going to do a spoiler-filled review here. So I, I know there are some people who are sensitive about spoilers with this movie. This review is going to do all the spoilers. I'm, I'm going to talk about all the plot points, uh, although I suspect most people know about this already, which is spoilers. Uh, that this movie brings back uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield back in their roles of Spider-Man for uh, a multiverse crossover in, in which the Spider-Mans from all three franchises uh, are now together in the same movie uh, as long as as well as with uh, many of the villains from uh, the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield movies. So this is the kind of movie that I would have absolutely loved when I was 10 years old. I mean, didn't we dream of these kind of movies when we were young? You, you know, when, when we were going out on long walks and imagining the, uh, the movies that we wanted to see and the, and the, and the different crossovers, uh, all, all the crossovers you used to imagine when you were young with... Uh, superheroes from different franchises or characters from different franchises that you you imagined would come together into one big movie and wouldn't it be awesome uh, and it was also the kind of movie when we were young or when i was young at least that no big studio would ever have done uh i mean maybe like it would have been a television movie if they could have gotten the budget for the stars or something like that but i i it was a kind of movie that children dreamed of, but the studios would never do because I, I think it was viewed uh, as something that would have no mainstream appeal. It would only be for the geeks and that the mainstream audiences would have considered it to be too silly. But we are living in a golden age of geek content. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not the first person to point this out. In fact, I, I think it's been pointed out many times since, I don't know, about since the turn of the century, I guess, with the, the Lord of the Rings movies or maybe with the superhero revival movies. But, but whenever it started, we are full flung into it now, where things that previously would have been regarded as stuff that would only interest hardcore geeks are now major uh, major motion pictures. I mean, I think this new Spider-Man movie is out there breaking records. So uh, there, there are a lot of people going to see this movie. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is the kind of thing which would have seemed so awesome to me when I was 10 years old. But now that I'm older, when I first started hearing the rumor rumors, and, and we all heard the rumors, right, about uh, Tommy McGuire and Andrew Garfield being on set for this, it's the kind of thing where you think, well, okay, that that would have been cool when I was 10. I, I mean, I, I didn't know all these characters when I was 10, but you know, that, that kind of idea. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Would have been cool when I was 10, but um, I'm a bit older now, and this seems like it's a little bit cheesy, Maybe the mark of desperation from a studio that has run out of ideas. Can they really pull it off? And then when the movie got released, the early reviews started coming in and it was getting positive reviews. People were saying, yeah, they pulled it off. So I, I was eager to check it out and uh, went with my wife to the movie theater. And yeah, they, they pulled it off. I mean, part of the thing, part of the reason they pulled it off is that the reason that Marvel has been such a hit machine lately, uh, where it's just such an entertaining movie. The, uh, the actors are all incredibly charismatic and likable. Uh, the directing is good. Uh, you know, the editing just moves at a very fast pace where, where you're going from scene to scene to scene. The, the music cues are all spot on. The, the, the dramatic moments are good. Uh, it, I mean, it's just a very fast-paced 
tightly edited movie, but I, I, I mean that in a good way. It, it just hums. So you are along for the ride. Uh, and the action scenes. The action scenes are spectacular. I mean, I think, I think dating all the way back to the first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire, the, the studios figured out that the way you do these Spider-Man movies is you capture the thrill of the motion of just swinging from object to object uh, and, and then shooting out the webs and then catching the webs and swinging and shooting again. That, that was all the way back in the Tobey Maguire movies. And then every Spider-Man movie I've seen since then, I think, has managed to improve on that kinetic energy. I, I never actually saw the Andrew Garfield ones, actually. I, I like a lot of people, I, I said, what? They're rebooting Spider-Man again already? No, no, no. I, I just got done watching the Spider-Man movies. I'm, I'm not going again to see another reboot, which I think was a lot of people's reaction. So I, I didn't see the Andrew Garfield movies. But, um, so, you know, certainly that was the reaction for the Tobey Maguire movies. And then when Tom Holland uh, took the role, I've, I've seen all the Marvel... Sony uh, team-up Spider-Man movies, the Marvel MCU Spider-Man movies. Um, and those have also done a good job of keeping that kinetic energy of Spider-Man swinging around with, with the camera showing things from his point of view or the camera showing him swinging around. Uh, they, they, they've continued to do a great job of that. And this, this Spider-Man movie has it. Uh, and it... It has it right from the beginning scenes, but then the action gets more and more intense. Uh, I mean, that the, that scene on the bridge with him fighting uh, Dr. Octopus was good. And then when he fights Dr. Strange, that was good. Um, it, we'll, we'll get into maybe the character motivations in a little bit. Uh, superheroes fighting each other is a bit of a cliche in the genre, both in the printed medium uh, and, and also now with the MCU. But it, it was kind of a moment where I thought they both had good motivations. I mean, you could understand why Doctor Strange knew that the multiverse being in danger was a huge problem. Uh, but you could also stand why Peter Parker felt he had a moral obligation not to send these characters back to die. So that they both had reasonably good motivations, and they both had their own unique skill set. Uh, Peter Parker swinging around with the web, Doctor Strange being able to open up the portals, and then they went into that mirror universe where there not only do you have the kinetic energy of Peter Parker swinging around, but you've got that speeding train going through and and all the falling and swinging around in that universe. I mean, it was just great energy that, that just sucked you along. Uh, and then, then the, the fights uh, with those villains, where you had all those, those villains at once, uh, and just fighting one villain and the other villain would pop out, uh, and just a constant energy between the, the different... Spider-Man swinging around and the, the villains who just seem to pop up everywhere. Uh, yeah, I mean, th th those action scenes were well done and, and they really worked. So the, the movie has what a lot of these Marvel movies has going for it, uh, which is just great action scenes, charismatic actors, very tight, fast-paced editing, and it just hums along so fast that you don't really have time to think about the logic of it. Um, which is fortunate, because maybe if you did have time to think about the logic of it, you would have some questions. Um, so right at the beginning, uh, that, that whole part where Peter Parker's identity is revealed to the world is, is interesting. The, the, the movie seems to swing wildly from aspect to aspect. So you, you, first he's got the helicopters uh, outside his house. I guess that's the media tracking him, or I don't know. Then the police all of a sudden show up, and before you even have time to process what's happening, 
then they're in the police interrogation rooms, and it seems to be a little bit silly, but the humor mostly works. And then before you even have time to process that, then they're out and their lawyer, uh, the, the daredevil, uh, has gotten them out. And, and by the way, that's, that's a, a nice crossover moment with the uh, Marvel television series, the, the Netflix television series, which I actually never even saw those. But uh, I, I do appreciate when a series is keeping its continuity. So, so as, as a comic book geek, I doff my hat to the efforts made to integrate now their Netflix series into their greater uh, MCU universe. I anyways, they, they, they go quickly from that to all of a sudden they're out and their lawyer is, ex lawyer is explaining, okay, you, they, they don't have a, a, a case. And then all of a sudden we go to Peter Parker entering high school and all the media around them. Uh, and then he's, he's trying to enter back as a normal student. Uh, and I, I thought to myself, okay, th th this, I'm not sure I'm buying all of these character moments. Uh, this seems to be a little bit fast paced. I, I mean, it, obviously with comic book movies, you have to sustain there's a certain level of suspension of disbelief. You have to believe that there's magic and that there's people with capes flying around and all this different stuff. But, um, but you still want the character motivations to make sense, even after you've accepted all the fantastic elements of the universe. And I thought, you know, if, if I were Peter Parker, I, I would just stay home, or I'm sure maybe the school would request him to stay home, or... <gasps> work on an arrangement where he doesn't have to come to school because that, you know, that one student brings so much disrupt, disruption to, to the school. I, 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 I think he just wouldn't be coming back to school in, in that situation. So th those kinds of things. And then Peter Parker going to Dr. Strange seemed to be another leap. Uh, I mean, I, I guess it's explained in the movie by the fact that he sees the wizard ornaments in the Halloween doc decorations or something like that. Um, now, to, to a certain extent, this is one of those cases where the marketing is doing the job of the plotting for the movie, if, if you know what I mean. Because we, the audience, have already seen the trailers for this. We've already seen the hype. We already know that Doctor Strange is going to be involved in, in this movie trying to get Peter Parker out of it. So to a certain extent, we're just waiting for the movie to get there. So when, when the movie shows the uh, ornaments of the witches and then Peter Parker gets the idea to go to Doctor Strange, the, the audience has, has already bought into this a long time ago because we've, we've seen the previews. So the 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 work that the movie has to do to get us on board with this is a lot less. By the same token, uh, Doctor Strange wanting to perform the spell even though he knows it's going to be really dangerous. Um, you, you know, I mean, fair enough, you can, you can say, okay, Peter Parker, he, he's, he's a kid, he's impulsive. You can imagine him going along with it. D Doctor Strange... His character is supposed to be a lot older and wiser and would know better, right? I think. I, I actually never saw the first Doctor Strange movie, but I've, I, I think I've seen them, him in all the subsequent Marvel movies. So it, it's another character moment that doesn't entirely make sense, arguably. But, one, the, the audience has already bought into this before we even walk in the door. Because we, we already know this is the premise of the movie from the previews. And two, the movie is just moving at such a fast pace that, that you really don't spend a lot of time analyzing this. You, you've, you've got maybe some lingering doubts in the back of your mind, but you, you just go with it. Uh, you know, this, this movie is just going where this movie is going. Uh, and it, it's just so entertaining that, that you just go with it. Um, 
as well as the uh, three Spider-Mans showing up. Again, the Tobey Maguire and the Andrew Garfield. Um, now, it, it's like I said before, it's the kind of thing that could be pretty cheesy and come up of, off as a little bit desperate. And it does come off as a little bit cheesy, some of those moments between the three Spider-Mans. But it mostly works. Uh, again, it's relatively well written. The actors are all incredibly charismatic. So you don't begrudge them the screen time. There is a lot of fan service, which is to be expected. I mean, you wouldn't make this kind of movie without doing fan service, right? You, you, having brought all three Spider-Mans together, you can't not do all those scenes the fans want to see with them talking to each other and exchanging insights and, and I don't know, just, just the three Spider-Men hanging out. Where this movie starts to falter a little bit, though, is the fact that they're all hanging out in bonding, the three Spider-Men are hanging out in bonding, means that the story is not going anywhere. The, the, the plot is not advancing. You're just watching these three Spider-Men hang out. So I had what I suspect was the reaction of a lot of people being like, oh, isn't it so cool that they're all together? Okay, I, I just want them to talk more and uh, hang out and have those character moments. But then I also had the same, I also had the same sense like, okay, but, but when, when is the story going to pick up again? Uh, you, you know, we, we, we've got this climax we're going to get to. We're, we're not going to spend too long just hanging out and not doing anything, are we? And I think that it mostly works because the movie has bought itself some leeway by this stage. Uh, meaning that we've things have been so fast-paced and so action-packed up until this point that the, the movie has bought itself some slowing down time, even though it does maybe spend a little bit too long just spinning its wheels and having the Spider-Man hang out and not get to the climax. Um, but then when it does get to the climax, it's it's really action-packed um, and, and great. Um, and then the final resolution doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? So it, it's, it's been built up that if these characters go back to their original universes, they will die. Because that's what happened in the original universes and in, in the original movies that we saw. So, the, the solution to this is to cure them, to, to, to make them become better. Um, okay, so they're all better now. And then they're going back to their original universes. And I, are, are they still going to die? What point in time do they go back to their original universes? Um, it, I mean, it doesn't really feel like it's completely resolved or make a lot of sense, except the movie obviously wants you to believe that everything is all right now. Uh, just the, the whole framing of the movie and the music and, and the, the, the way that everything's peacefully fading away. The audience is like, oh, okay, I don't understand this 100%, but somehow they're all okay now and, and they're going to live. Uh, and I don't, I don't know how Peter Parker knows this. I, I don't know. I don't know how this is established, but obviously, th this is the impression I am meant to be left with. So, so this is the uh, th this is what I'm buying into now. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that part about everyone forgetting Peter Parker is um, interesting. We'll see how this is handled in the sequels. I mean, it's, it's the kind of thing that could lend itself to more drama, but it could also, I mean, I, I'll, I'll tell you what I do not want to see. I do not want to see Peter Parker and Mary Jane falling in love 
or Mary Jones, I guess, right? Um, I, I think it's established that in the MCU universe, it's Mary Jones, not Mary Jane. I, I don't want to see them falling in love all over again because I saw that arc already played out in this franchise. But we'll, we'll withhold judgment and, and see how they do uh, in the next, uh, in the sequel movies. We'll, we'll, we'll see how they do. Uh, and then the mid credit scene... Uh, Venom, which is, I guess, opening the door now to the, the symbiote being left here in uh, the MCU universe. And then, yeah, that last end credit scene was weird, wasn't it? Uh, and and I, I've spoiled everything else, so I'm, I'm going to spoil this as well. So I was there with my wife, and... We knew, of course we knew, that you had to stay to the end credits because it's a Marvel movie and that's what they do. So we're, we're watching and we're watching and we, and we get to the... Uh, and, and, you know, those credits are so long and boring. You know, part of me wishes uh, that, that they, would, they would stop doing this or at, at least you, because... I mean, I mean, here's the thing. When they first did those end credit scenes... It was kind of a, a neat little Easter egg because some people knew to stay till the end of the credits and some people didn't. So it seemed to reward insider knowledge uh, or it seemed to be a, 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 a neat little thing that only some people would pick up on. But now that everyone knows that there's an end credit scene, it's like, oh, okay, are you going to make us sit through all these credits I mean, I mean, those credits are so boring, right? But you have to sit through them. And then, and then you sit through them, and then it's not an in-credit scene. It's a trailer. It's, it's a trailer for another movie. And, oh, I mean, okay, that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness looks interesting. And I, I, I did like the Doctor Strange will return in uh, this movie, you know, kind of a nod to those James Bond uh, um tags that they used to put at the end of the old, the old James Bond movies. Um, but, you know, if, if I'm just going to watch a trailer, I can watch a trailer off of YouTube. Uh, I, I was thinking there would be an extra scene at the end of the movie. And I, 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 had, I had heard some people say, isn't it odd that, there's, that it's just a trailer for a Doctor Strange movie? And I thought they were speaking metaphorically. Like, I, I thought they were saying, isn't it odd that this scene e essentially is just working as a trailer? But it, it is just literally a trailer for the Doctor Strange movie. And um, somebody, I forget where I saw this, somebody on Twitter or something made the comment, isn't it weird that Sony has a trailer for a Marvel movie at the end of the Sony movie? I, I mean, you know, I, I, I know that they're working together and they're making trade-offs and stuff all this stuff, but, um, yeah, I, you, you wonder what kind of deal is going on there where, where Sony has agreed to this, but, but Sony's obviously agreed to that. So, uh, yeah, to sum up, um, well, it's, it's, it's a fantastic ride. You, you know, uh, if you want to overanalyze it, there are plenty of things you can nitpick. But if you're just judging it on pure entertainment value, you you could not ask for a more entertaining movie. So uh, I'll, I'll 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 leave it with that as my summation. I, I I was going to say I'll leave it with that as my recommendation, but um, hopefully. No, nobody's watching this video who hasn't already seen the movie, right? Because I've, I've just spoiled everything. Okay. Um, 